The Le Mans 24 hours is one of the hardest races in the world, so it's no surprise that some manufacturers have never actually won it. So here are your top 5 manufacturers that have failed to win the Le Mans 24 hours. Number 1. Maserati Maserati first entered the famous French race in 1954 and 1955, where they'd enter three cars into both races, which you'd think they'd stand pretty decent chance, they're doing stuff in Formula 1, they're doing pretty well in stuff, what could go wrong? The gearboxes did. Yes, in 54 and 55 they didn't finish the races, as they had oil pressure issues, gearbox issues and distributor issues. But finally, in 1956, they did finish in, in ninth position in a Maserati 150S, which was privately entered by Claude Bourrot and, Hem and was co-driven by Henri Perrault. Maserati's best result was a fourth place in the Maserati Typo 60, which was entered by Briggs Cunningham. The, the drivers of the car would be Angie Babs and Dick Thompson, and they'd only finished behind a Ferrari 123, which, if you think about it, that's not too bad, best of the rest. So, the final year the Maserati would enter the Le Mans 24 hours was in 1965, when John Simone entered a Maserati Typo 65, which was co-driven by Joe Sifter and Jochen Nierpasch. The car would have to retire, though, after it gained damage from a spin. Number 2. Lamborghini Lamborghini's first attempt at Le Mans 24 hours was in 1975, where Paul Riley entered the Lamborghini 400 GT, which would be co-driven by Roger Lee Levy in the GTX class, but sadly the car wouldn't make the start of the race as it had an issue in practice which then stopped it from qualifying. It wouldn't be until 2006 until we saw the next Lamborghini enter the race, that would be a Mercialago RGT entered by the Lamborghini's Owners Club of Japan, which would be driven by Marco Akisela, Yasutaka Hinoi and Koji Yaminas. The car would have a great race until the final lap when it broke down, which is, I mean, it's just it's Le Mans, isn't it? Really, just a heartbreaker of a race. The car would come back in the years after, but would kind of suffer with a plethora of issues, the worst of which being in 2009. Again, it was open, uh, entered by the Japan Lamborghini's Owners Club, which were a bit less prepared for this year, as when the uh, drivetrain went, they had to bring Reuters in Germany for a new one, and then they noticed on Thursday there was an oil leak. This was enough for Akisela to pull out of the race, and then the Lamborghini only completed one lap anyway. So they really have to remove some blushes when they come back next year. Number 3. Cadillac Cadillac have had somewhat of an interesting history at the Le Mans 24 hours, with them first entering the race in 1950 with a modded C61 coupe, which the French nicknamed the Le Monster. Briggs Cunningham entered the car, with himself driving alongside Phil Waters. Cunningham would also enter a Cadillac 5061 Coupe de Ville, which was unmodified and was driven by Miles and Sam Corona. The Monster was a monster on the Mulsanne Strait, with it setting a speed of 215km per hour, which roughly translates to 133 miles per hour. The Le Monster w had good pace, but its reliability wasn't great, with the car going off into the sand at Mulsanne Corner for 20 minutes when Briggs Cunningham drove it off the road, and then it would also have some gearbox and leaking issues which left the car stuck in third gear for the rest of the race. But the Le Monster would finish in 11th position, and the unmodified Coupe de Ville would finish in 10th, which is really a decent result considering this was their first race. It wouldn't be for another 50 years until we saw Cadillac take part in the race again, with them ordering Riley and Scott to make them a prototype car, with Cadillac focusing on a V8 engine for the car. In the first attempt, they'd have four cars at the race, two being run by Riley and Scott as the manufacturing effort, and then another two being entered by Dams, the French team. In the highest finishing of these cars would be in 20th position, with only of them not, one of them not making the finish because of an engine fire. In 2001, there were some changes to the car with uh, a new suspension, new bonnet, and a new tyres. Two cars were entered by Dams into this race, with one of them finishing 15th, which was an improvement, but still not better than the 1950 result. Then in 2002, they'd have a complete overhaul of the car, with the car being created in Britain, and then kind of like focusing on the twin-turbo V8. 
the car would finish in the great ninth position, an improvement from their 1950 result, but it was 30 laps down due to problems with the starter, electrics, and overheating. Then this year, they've returned with the V Series R, which showed flashes of pace throughout this year's race, with the car briefly going P3 in qualifying until it got set itself on fire. And then it would the number two car would finish P3 in the race, with the drivers being El Bamba, Alex Lynn, and Richard Westbrook, showing they may have some potential in years to come. Number four, Glickenhaus. Glickenhaus first entered the 24 hours of the one in 2021 and they were one of the first constructors to announce their were entering the NMDH slash hypercar class with their Glickenhaus SCG 007 LMH. They first year as previously mentioned was 2021 where they had entered two cars into the race with the first car having Gustav Mentes, Oliver Pla and Pipo Durrani in the 708 car. Then in the 709 you had Roman Dumas, Richard Westbrook and Ryan Briscoe. They, the race didn't go too badly but it didn't start that well for the 708 car that got a 10 second penalty after it kind of speared straight into the side of the number 8 Toyota. Then apart from this there were some minor issues for the car throughout the race but they'd come home in 5th and 4th with the 709 being the 5th place car and the 708 coming home in 4th which isn't a too bad re re result considering this was their first time at this great event as a small team. There would be some changes for 2022 though, with Roman Dumas going into the 708 car replacing Gustavo Menez, and Frank Malux would go into the 709 car making it a free driver lineup for each car. Um, with this though, they had a pretty decent race in 2022, at one stage they were both running 3rd and 4th until the 708 car went 7 laps down after Oliver Pla on an outlap went off at Tetra Rouge glancing the barrier, which then obviously the repairs put it 7 laps down. But apart from this, the 709 had a completely clear race which allowed it to finish in 3rd, the team's best result at the 24 hours of Le Mans, which is quite impressive for such a small team. This year there were some other changes with Nathuriel Baron joining the team and Esteban Gutierrez with Nathaniel Baffon sharing both cars and then Esteban in the 709 car. This year's race would be a lot less clean for Glickenhaus as 5 hours in the 709 car would be going slow and then 6 hours in it suffered from a slow puncture. Just before this the 708 car had to serve a 5 minute penalty in the race and then in the early hours at 8am the 709 car spun off with Malux at the wheel and went into the walls with front end damage which then caused the car to go into the pit lane. Then just before the end the 709 car would go straight on at the Mulsanne chicane which then caused it some damage again. But then it still beat all of the Porsche manufacturer efforts coming in 6th and 7th which is pretty decent in a stacked field of all these new manufacturers. Number 5 Nissan. In 1986 it was Nissan's first time at the race with them entering the R86V and the R85V which were both March chassis powered by a Nissan 3 litre twin turbo V6 engine. The cars would be driven by homegrown Japanese talent with in the R86 Kazushi Hiroshino, Kenji Matsumoto and Aguri Suzuki. Then in the R85 you had Mashimu Hazami, Takio Maeda and British touring car driver James Weaver. So the cars weren't that competitive in the race though with the R85 finishing in 16th position and then the R86 not making the end of the race with it having camshaft issues in the 5th hour of the race. 1998 was Nissan's best year in the race as they entered the Nissan R390 GT1 which was uh, basically a Nissan sports car with the VRH35L engine which was a 3.5 litre twin turbo V8 that produced 600 pph. The Japanese manufacturer would enter four cars into this year's race with Kazushi Hishimu, Aguri Suzuki and Hamashizuku Kenjiyama in the number 32 car, John Nielsen, Frank Logos and Michael Crum in the number 30 car. In the number 31 you had Jan Lammers, Eric Comas and Andrea Montemini and then in the 34 was Satoshimi Yotoyama, Masami Kanjiyama and Takuyuma Kazumoza. 
The car was f fared pretty well in the race, with them only having a few offs and a few little issues, with the biggest being a fuel pump issue for the number 30 car. All the cars came home in 3rd, 5th, 6th and 10th in a pretty decent result, with the 32 car of Azui Hushinu, Aguri Suzuki and Masashinu Kenjiyama was the first all Japanese driver lineup to podium at the Le Mans 24 hours. Then they returned in 2015 with a, a monster but really every not like the Cadillac was like oh scary monster in every word of the bad sense a monster it was the GTR LM Nismo it was a twin turbo 3 litre V6 engine that powered the car that produced 1250 bhp when combined with the car's electric systems the, um, the interesting bit of the car though was it was um, front wheel drive which was quite is definitely unique at the time. Its only appearance was in the 2015 24 Hours of Le Mans, where they'd enter three cars. The first of which was the 21 that was entered by, which was driven, I mean, by Tsugoga Matsu, Lucas Ordinez, Mark Schulhitzkiv, and then you had the 22 that was driven by Harry Tinknell, Alex Buncombe, and Mark Michael Crum, and then you had the 23 driven by Max Chilton, Jan Marlinborough, and Oliver Lepla. Um, just to show the quite brilliant pace of this car, um, it was 20.10 seconds off in qualifying, it was 18.413 seconds off the pace in the race, and then any, unlike any other car they'd made previously for the race, it just didn't have any reliability at all. The number 21 would retire first on lap 115 with suspension failure. Then number 23 would be the same to retire when the gearbox caught fire. It had been struggling with um, clutch issues before this, so that would all happen on lap 234. Then the other car, the 22, didn't finish the race as it was not classified, as it didn't finish in the 70% race range that the winning Porsche did. Uh, it did have an incident during the night where it hit a tyre from a, another incident from another car that had gone off at 186 miles per hour on the mall stand, damaging the bonnet and the lights on the car. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.